Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. I was going to do a quick video about the valve train on my S10. For those who remember, if you watch some of the other videos, you don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Watch those, you'll understand. I'm going to try to piece this video together, but um, for whatever reason, my editing software, at least on my phone, that iVideo has a, or iMovie has a hard time linking things together than saying I'm out of storage, even though the phone has a ton. So I don't understand that. So I don't know how well this is going to work out. I know if you don't care about this, you better hear about the valve train so we'll get to it so as you guys know and i'm just showing you this is a small block chevy it's a 355 um this one is a solid roller and it's got 780 lift on intake and i can't remember the exhaust which is sad but i think it's in the 680 range something like that the exhaust is definitely shorter than the intake now these are the rock arms that i have uh being that it's a solid roller um i um one of the you know, an economical shaft rocker setup. Now I'll go ahead and admit to you straight up, these are not cheap. So this is probably one of the cheaper shaft rocker setups you can get. LGM used to be, but I had a hard time getting them from them and I'm not even sure if they're still even open. So um, I use Jessel for the um, cheaper stuff. They do have a more expensive one, but it is very expensive. And usually it's T and D for everything else or Crower. Um, and I'll go through some of the difference and the reason why. So these are Sportsman's, and I'll tell you about a couple of differences. The Sportsman's usually run, and I'm, I'm uh, they bumped me down from the dealership, the Master Warehouse dealer, because I didn't sell enough, partly because their prices were too high. But um, the Sportsman run about 1150 to 1200 bucks, which is a lot of money, I'm not even gonna lie. But when you look at a stud rocker setup, you've got the studs, which are like 50, um, the stud mount rocker arms, let's say you got the ones from Comp, the good ones, they're gonna run you between 350 to 400, and then you get a stud girdle that's another three. Um, you're, you know, it's only like a five to six hundred dollar more deal to get shaft rockers. And I'm like, well, that's still a lot of money, and it is, I'm not even gonna lie. But I'll go ahead and tell you this if you ever ran shaft rockers, you'll never go back to stud mount because they're so easy to set up and they just better. Do I think they make more power? The answer is actually no, but it does give you some advantages. For instance, the highest rocker ratio really on a stud mount rocker you can run is a 1.7. Um, actually, I think Crowder might even make a 1.8. On a shaft mount rocker setup, besides the Sportsman's, if you get their Pro Series, you get T&Ds or even Jessel, or Crowers, you can go up pretty high. I've gone up to a 1.9 on a small block Chevy, which is pretty, pretty insane. Um, so that's one advantage. The second, and this is the biggest one, is it gives you more opportunities on heads because what you can do is on the shaft mount system, because the bolts, the shafts bolted in place, you could actually move the offset over and I'll show you between the standard one and not. And what that does, that moves the push rod out of the way. So it allows you to do different things in a cylinder head to make more power that you couldn't do with a stud mount. So there's that. So let me show you what I mean by offset. And both of these are sportsmen's, okay? If you were to order a set of Sportsman's Jessels that fit the small block Chevy, most of your heads, Dark Pro ones, these um, Dragon Slayers, Track ones, I think even the RHSs, you're going to get them like this. This is what they have. Okay? Notice that. Now, Jessel offers this one. What's the difference between that rocker and this rocker? This is what they call their O, meaning it's got more offset. This is a standard offset, and this one's like a 300 offset. And what that allows you to do, because this is what I'm running on the S10, is if you look at mine, that push rod is a 3 8 push rod. It's not a 5 16 Anytime you can go to a bigger push rod, do it. This is also a 165 wall or 135. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's as thick as I could get from comp. It's also got a 210 degree tip on the ball, on the push rod. That's what you should get. Just, just a recommendation. Three eighths, as thick as walls you can get. Two ten tip. And if you could tell, that's a slot on the head, and there's where the push rod is. So it's not even close to rubbing. I've got more room if I wanted. So there gives you some idea. So that's some of the help that it gives. Now on the Pro Series, you can go even further. And let me see if I can't dig out a rocker real quick and show you. Sorry for the walk around. Actually, should have planned a little better. I don't feel like making multiple takes. It's bad video quality. I'm sure someone's gonna thumbs down this. I don't care. Here we go. All right. There we are. 
This is actually the Jessel Pro Series rocker. Now these are very expensive. So I think the retail one was like $1,800. These are called a Mohawk Lightning Beam. So that actually makes the rocker way less. This one is for my Track 1 10XRIs. These have a 750 offset, which means from here to here, 750 thousandths. It's probably about the most you can run. This one also has a different option, which makes it stronger. Notice the adjuster. These are called ball tips. So what you do is you have to order a push rod that doesn't have a ball tip like what you just saw. It has a cup and the cup sits over this. What it does is twofold. It makes the rocker itself stronger because when you have a cup at the bottom, it makes it weaker right through there. The balls are stronger. The other thing is it also makes the push rod stronger because it's easier to have a cup that's straight through the whole stem than it would be to have um, a ball at the end. So there's that advantage. By the way, in case you're wondering, that's a 185 ratio and a 17. So these are way more expensive. But anyway, back to the truck. They're relatively easy to install. I mean, one thing is, it's not probably the easiest to install when you have on the head. The way you set these, and I'm probably giving you too much information, is Jessel, um, you buy this thing from them, but you'll have to take off the spring. And it's a little groove that lets it, the valve sit in here and it measures your height. And then you're able to set the stand height. Because the first thing you do is set the stand height. You can do it without it. You know, you put shims underneath the stand to bring the rockers up where you want. Okay. And Jessel has real easy stuff. And I mean, it takes hardly any time at all. I don't have the heads apart to show you. Otherwise, I would. After that, you're like, well, what do you do about push rod height? It's pretty simple. You take the adjuster and you back it off like one and a half turns. And then you just measure the distance between that and all the way down where the um, lifter is, and that's it. There's no looking at halfway points like you would with the stud mount. It's super simple. It makes it, things life a lot easier. But anyway, that's the valve train I have on this. So far, it's worked well. These really are the cheapest um, American-made shaft walker setup that's available. My next step up, usually I sell people, is the T&D because they're $1,550. They've got some advantages over Jessel that I like. And then um, I rarely ever sell the Pro Series, which I just showed you. After that, I usually go to the Crower because those are steel. They're less likely to break, less valve deflection. And those run about 100 bucks more than T&D. T&D does have a steel setup, and they are 2200 bucks, which brings me back to Jessel. Jessel makes a Sportsman steel version. So it's a Sportsman just like this, but it's steel, 2200 bucks. That's their most economical one is what the top of the line uh t and d cost so it's like why I, I didn't get it um jessel does make the best steel rockers in their pro series though which is phenomenal but those are almost three grand yeah three grand but anyway um just thought i'd go over some of the valve train stuff with you and uh, thanks for watching please subscribe um Today, I want to thank everybody that subscribed so far. Due to all your subscriptions, I have been able to make $12.58. And my wife is so ecstatic that we have upgraded from McDonald's to Whataburger. Thank you, subscribers. Which, by the way, I love Whataburger. Patty Mel Mills. Take care, guys.